My son was murdered on November 28th, 2010. My husband and I think that my sister did it because that day we were all outside smoking cigarettes. She would go in and out of the house. It was just very weird because she never did that. She usually stayed outside with us. My sister also has been around several times before with other kids and there has been abuse. I don't want to believe it's her. I'm hoping it's not her, but part of me does believe it. At first, my husband was accused of murdering our son. I don't believe my husband did anything. The truth is that she's not supposed to be around our kids. Why is that? Because there was another incident involving her and another child. So you then let her go inside the house by herself with your child? Yes. And she's not supposed to be by your child? Yes. And then what happens? My wife goes into the kitchen and makes his bottle, and I carry the other child into the room. And when she comes in, she notices something's wrong. What did she notice? She noticed that he wasn't moving. I pick him up, and he's lifeless. He's blue, and he's ice cold. The cause of death for your son was cerebral trauma. And you think your sister-in-law caused these injuries? I say yes. Why? Uh, when she made the first statement was actually a year after he passed away. That what? That she said that she spoke with someone and they admitted to the murder of my son. And that she personally stood in the hallway and watched him do it. Did you cause the injuries to your son? No, sir. Did you cause any of these injuries to your son? Maybe one or two, I don't know. What? <laughs> Could you have caused injuries to his head? I might have with one time. I laid him on the end of the mattress while it was on the floor. And I went to go get his clothes, his pamper, and the bottle. And when I sat down, the air went to one side. He went up, but I caught him, and he didn't hit anything. So he couldn't have suffered any injuries? I mean, they said that a sudden jolt may cause. We're talking head trauma here. Yeah. Like somebody taking a hammer and hitting but him. But see, as I was explaining, is I don't know if I'm the one that caused these. I'm just trying to give an explanation. Did you kill your nephew? No, I didn't. He says you were very suspicious the day he died. He kept going in and out of the house. Why were you going in and out of the house? I never was going in and out of the house. But you had to go in the house and uh, yeah, outside the house, right? Yeah. You were staying there? Yes. Did you use the bathroom? Yes. Did you eat? Yes. Did you have your clothes inside? Yes. OK, so you have reasons to go in inside the house. Exactly. Did you go in and Hit that little baby in the head. No. Did you cause any injury at all? No. Why do you think that your own sister and uh, Mr. Passionate over here is accusing you of killing their son? They need somebody to blame other than themselves. Uh, another child that was in the house was interviewed playing with the doll. Hit it in the head, threw it on the ground, and kicked the doll and stated, this is what we do when the baby cries. You came here and you took a lie detector test. Yes, I did. Did you cause the death of your seven-week-old nephew, Mario? You answered no. She told the truth. <laughs> Do you know for sure who caused the death of your nephew? You answered no. She told the truth. Did you ever physically abuse your nephew, Mario? You answered no. You told the truth. <laughs> Did you cause the death of your seven-week-old son? No. And you said no. Did you ever physically abuse your seven-week-old son? No. You said no. Did you ever witness your husband physically abusing your seven-week-old son? No. You said no. Did you ever witness your sister physically abusing your seven-week-old son? No. You said no. Do you know for sure who caused the death of your seven-week-old son? No. You said no. And the results came back all the same for the questions we asked you. And they came back that you told the truth. Mario went back and we asked him, do you know who caused the injuries that led to your son's death? He answered, no. Did you ever physically abuse your seven-week-old son? 
He answered, no. Did you cause the death of your seven-week-old son? And he answered, no. And the results from Ariel's lie detector exam, all the results are the same. And they came back that Mario did not tell the truth. <laughs> That's not true. No, 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 no. I'm being accused of my daughter's death. It's time for me to vindicate myself. 25 years I've been walking around and people think that I'm some kind of child killer. Well, my daughter was two years old. I spanked my daughter with a small belt on her buttocks and her legs. And after I spanked her, she was running around with my other kids. Man, I go to work. I come back later on, my little girl was gone. They trying to say that my daughter was beat to death. I ain't caused my daughter death. Something else happened to my daughter. And I refuse to believe that my spanking caused my daughter death. To make matters worse, I was also accused of molesting and raping my daughter, Kamora. I want to be vindicated of all this stuff that's been said about me. He is not a baby killer. He did not kill my sister. I was six years old. I remember that day as like it was yesterday, okay? We was eating our lunch, and my baby sister was in her high chair, and she kept throwing her food on the floor. And uh, my dad warned her and said, you know, stop throwing your food. She threw her food anyway, so he uh, took her and, you know, this is how he whooped her. He pulled her over the couch and he spanked her on the butt and across her legs. With his hand? With the little belt. With the little belt. He popped her on her, on her butt. And after that, she was running around playing, you know, like it was no tomorrow. We was woken up the next day um, for breakfast. Um, I, I woke up one of my sisters and when it was time for me to wake up her, she didn't wake up. I thought she was playing. I thought she was playing peekaboo because that's what she liked to do. And I couldn't wake her up. After that, she, ran, she went out in the ambulance. They immediately took us and put us into this hospital. They got to questioning us, asking if my dad ever heard us. They asked me all kinds of crazy questions. Have my dad played with me? Of course, yeah, my dad played with us. You know, but at the time, I didn't understand what they meant about play. Right. So... I was like, yes, they, he played with us. Have, they asked me, who, who um, babe you? My dad. Um, did he um, I asked him were, to demonstrate. You were how old were you at the time? I was six. You were six. I didn't know what a vagina was. Right. I, I, I known it as cuckoo. And so they asked me, um, did he uh, wash my cuckoo? Yes. They asked me to demonstrate how he washed me up. And so I demonstrated whatever. Next thing you know, we was thrown into a, a foster care. After that, I was abused. I would wake up sometimes, and it was, uh, uh, you know, men j humping me. A month later, I was back in the hospital. They um, then, they, they checked down, you know, and that's when they found out I had gonorrhea. So they pinned that on my father. Instead of, me, a instead of them asking questions about what happened, anybody did anything, they, just pent that on my father because they were still gathering up evidence. But for a six-year-old going through this, it had to be well beyond your comprehension of all the things that were going I, on. I didn't know what was going on. So they took me back to another foster home. There are people picking me up, telling me how pretty I was. Next thing you know, I was beaten again, beaten, beaten, beaten. My sisters was beaten. My sister was beaten. I was beaten. And next thing you know, I was dragged up out my sleep to to get in the closet, and then they made me do oral sex with them. Sounds like you probably all suffered very traumatic Man, things, right? Very. At, at 15, um, I made an excuse. Well, I didn't make an excuse, but I, I found a way to get out, you know, out. So I went out and got pregnant. And after that, I found out I was pregnant. I ran away to my father again. This time, I, I left and, and stayed with him for a month. And... Um, and after people knew that I was running away to my father, here come all the accusations. Oh, uh, that's your baby. Um, that's your daddy's baby. Your sister's very um, passionate about defending your father. 
Right. Why do you believe that? Why? Because he got he got right she she got raped by him. Dad, why hey, you lying she, about hey, this? Man, I ain't never did nothing you, like you that. You know you did. You raped Kamoy and you you, you, you killed Kamoy. You crazy man. You people you know tell you, you that stuff, man. Come on, hey, you Dad. Believe everything I every time I tell you, man. Every time I tell you, man. I never hurt my child. I never hurt you or none of my kids. Every, yeah, I think no, I'm old school, man. You killed him. You killed him. Come on, man. We asked Anthony, your father, did you beat your daughter? Kawanda to death in 1988. You answer no. Other than spanking your daughter Kawanda on the button legs to discipline her, did you hit her anywhere else with excessive force on the day of her death? You answer no. Any time up to the week before her death, did you strike Kawanda with excessive force on her head or body? Nope. And you answer no. And the results for your lie detector tests the results came back all the same, and it came back that you did not tell the truth. What? What? Hell no! What? Hell no! What? 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 Man, I wasn't trying to hurt Now, we baby. did also give you a lie detector test whether you raped your daughter, Kamora. Yeah, I know. Oh Man, that comes out. Come on. No. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We gave your father a lie detector test, and we asked him, have you ever raped or had sexual intercourse with your daughter, Kamora? And he answered no. And the results too. for this lie detector test <laughs> is that your father told the truth. She died of suffocation. Man. I know I'm, that. I'm you know what? If you want to believe that, mm -mm -mm. then. Nobody's saying don't be with your father. Nobody's saying that. If you want to be with your father, go be with your father. You wanted an answer today. We gave it to you. It's not the answer you wanted to hear. But, but he didn't do it. That is no. He didn't do it. I called you, Steve, for help because I watch your show all the time. Somebody's going to watch this and say, you know what? She was brave enough to do that. I can do that, too. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilkos.com to get my help.